What's up, everybody? It's the Alex Leak and Friends NFL Podcast, back for another week. I'm your host, Alex Leak, and this is a special episode as it's the 2019 Week 14 Dallas Cowboys at the Chicago Bears preview. We're going to preview this game, a big game coming up tomorrow night on Thursday Night Football as the 6-6 Cowboys travel to Soldier Field to take on the 6-6 Bears. Pretty much a must-win game for both teams as they're trying to make the playoffs. Cowboys have a one-game lead over the Eagles in the division. But uh, if you look at it, the Eagles might have an easier schedule to finish the year. So pressure on Dallas to get as many wins as they can in the meantime and find a way to make the playoffs. Um, for the Bears, you know, they're two games back in the north of the, you know, of, you know, of making the wild card. But, um... A big loss by the Vikings on Monday night against the Seahawks uh, opens the door for a chance for the Bears to make the playoffs. In my opinion, they need to win out and finish 10-6 and six to make the playoffs. 9-7 and seven could do it, but that's asking an awful lot. So I need to see this Bears team get every win they can, and it starts with winning tomorrow night. A home game against the 6-6 six and six Cowboys, a team that's been underachieving this year bears too but sitting at four and six we felt like the season was over and to go on a two-game winning streak win three out of the last four put themselves into this position if you can just find a way to beat the cowboys here on thursday night football then you'll have 10 games to prepare for a big game at lambeau against your hated rival packers and come in on a three-game winning streak. So a big opportunity here for really both teams. But, you know, the Bears story would be even crazier. Um, like I said, the Vikings fell to 8-4 and four with the loss of the Seahawks. So it opens the door. You know, I was very critical of head coach Matt Nagy earlier in the year, just a couple weeks ago. Um, I got to the point where I was calling for him to be fired, sitting at 4-6. and six, But... Two wins later, sitting at 6-6. Six and six. You know what? If you're a head coach, if you're the Bears head coach and you sweep the Detroit Lions, I don't care who's playing at quarterback. You sweep the Lions, you know, that's going to earn a lot of, uh, you know, patience from me. If you can sweep the Lions, that's good stuff. I, I hate hearing the Lions fans talking all that shit. You know, they haven't accomplished anything, so I'm tired of hearing it. And thank God, Matt Nagy. Trubisky and this Bears team put them back in their place at the bottom of the division. So with that win and with that sweep of the Lions, Matt Nagy improves to 8-2 and two in his career against NFC North opponents as the Bears head coach. Look, I can't hate on that. I can't do it. So Matt Nagy is off of the fire Nagy uh, train, off of that ship. He's back in good graces for me. To me, it was all about his play calling, and it's been better the last two weeks. So, it better be on point. Uh, tomorrow night against the Cowboys, we're going to need it to be to beat this team. It's a very talented team. Talented enough to be a Super Bowl contender, Dallas Cowboys. But they've underachieved, like I've said. Lost some games they shouldn't. Um, so, hopefully Matt Nagy keeps it up. Bears 3-0 and when quarterback Mitch Trubisky has a passer rating of 100 or more. Last week, he went for a pass rating of 118 and three touchdowns against the, you know, in Ford Field in Detroit against the Lions. So can he have another good game? You know, let's not forget, Trubisky led the Bears on a game-winning drive that started from their own five-yard line. First and 15 from their own five. Trubisky leads the Bears down the field to take the lead 24-20 and put the pressure on the Lions, put the hand game in the hands of their dominant defense that's exactly what we like to see out of Trubisky I feel like he's hitting his stride at the right time here I feel like this Bears team is hitting their stride and starting to gain some momentum this game is key in keeping that momentum and going into Green Bay with as much momentum as we 
can. We're at a position in the in the season where one more loss is all we can take, and it, it, that alone might be enough to knock us out of the playoffs if Minnesota takes care of business. So, in no way can you lose this game at home to the Cowboys and uh, go to Green Bay with seven losses because at Lambeau is a very tough place to to win, and the Packers have been playing some solid football. So. You know, take care, beat a, ba a reeling Cowboys team, a, a Cowboys team that's got issues. Um, so Trubisky playing better of late, that has me encouraged. Also a player that's playing better of late, uh, linebacker Roquan Smith. You know, a guy that missed some games earlier in the year with und for undisclosed reasons. He seemed to be battling with some stuff uh, off the field. Is back and playing better than ever. Uh, some... Uh, Bears Twitter accounts, you know, tweeted at one point that the Bears should consider benching Roquan Smith. Get the hell out of here. This is an elite linebacker, and he showed it last week as he recorded 15 tackles and two sacks in the game. He's only the third player in NFL history to put up that stat line, and he joins Patrick Willis and Vinny Ray, two linebackers. So, you know, Roquan hitting his stride at the right time as well. He was all over the field on Thanksgiving, and he's going to need to be all over the field again uh, on Thursday night against these Cowboys. We're going to need Roquan chasing down Dak Prescott and Zeke Elliott and those guys. So big game, and we're going to need everyone to be on their at their best, but it's nice to see Roquan hitting his stride at this point in the season. Another good news for the Bears is defensive tackle Akeem Hicks returns to practice this week and is hopeful to return next week at the Packers. So, you know, three-game winning streak, 7-6, and six, going into Lambeau, getting Akeem Hicks back could be an awful lot of momentum, exactly what we need to beat the Packers at their house. But none of that matters if you don't beat the Cowboys in our house tomorrow night. Huge effing game. Going into it, Bears defense has got to be at their best, going up against Dak Prescott, who leads the league in uh, passing yards. So we got to contain him. And the Cowboys also own the NFL's number one uh, offense. So got to quiet these guys down. The Bills and the Patriots the last two weeks have shown the recipe for slowing this team down. Bears have to copy that and get it done in Soldier Field. It's going to be you know, such a big game. I can't wait for this one. Cowboys coming off a big loss on Thanksgiving to the Bills, you know, in Jerry World, looking to bounce back. They have a one-game lead over the Eagles in the NFC East, so, um, you know, but they know every win is important. Um, you know, Philly looks to have the easier schedule to finish the year than Dallas, so the Cowboys can't, you know, afford to lose much more games. Uh, the Cowboys offensive coordinator, Kellen Moore, uh, on the hot seat. In my opinion, Jerry Jones has started to notice that Kellen Moore has been giving running back Zeke Elliott a career low in touches per game this season. they got to get him more involved. Uh, and that's leading to more passes and asking Dak Prescott to do more. Dak Prescott is 2-6 and six in his career when he throws the ball 40 or more times a game. And he's done so five times this season. So... Kellen Moore's job has got to be to get Zeke Elliott more involved, get Tony Pollard more involved, and uh, put less pressure on Dak Prescott. Ask Prescott to do a little bit less than what he's been asked to do. And if they don't, that's fine with me because I want, you know, this is a game where Khalil Mack and Nick Williams and Leonard Floyd and these guys uh, have to get after the quarterback. So... Um, you know, I need a big game out of Khalil Mack, and this is an elite Cowboys offensive line. So it's going to be such a big game and so much on the line. Uh, we'll see if the Cowboys can get their offensive play calling figured out. But, you know, Kellen Moore was the hot, you know, young potential head coaching candidate earlier in the year. Now, even with Prescott leading the league in passing yards, even with this offense being as good as it has been this year, He's on the hot seat due to losing games down the stretch and not playing their best football. So Jerry Jones is impatient, and he wants to win now, and his patience is wearing thin. So 
Not only is Kellen Moore on the hot seat, but head coach Jason Garrett is absolutely on the hot seat. The clapper uh, hasn't been getting enough out of his roster, is you know, out of his team, and uh, they, you know, the pressure's on to go to Soldier Field and beat the Bears, who earlier in the year might have looked like a, a win, an easier win. Right now, the Bears seem to be hitting on all cylinders, and it's going to be a big one. Can't wait for this game. Uh, the Bears are the third team since 2005 to score and allow fewer than 18 points per game so far this season. So Bears are looking to try to make it a low-scoring battle out there. Hold the Cowboys to the least amount of points they can and allow this offense to get going. Uh, the Cowboys are 0-5 this season on teams that are 500 or better. So the Bears sitting at 6-6 six and six, fall right into that category at 500 so the Bears don't want to be the one team at that record to allow the Cowboys to get a win on them so hopefully they execute like I said huge game so many storylines going into this one Mitch Trubisky uh, you know the Bears settling for field goals in the red zone has been an issue all season long and uh, that's uh, up to Matt Nagy hopefully to call some better plays get us in better position to score Trubisky has a 67.9 passer rating in the red zone this season. Only quarterbacks with worst passer rating in the red zone, Baker Mayfield and Sam Darnold. Browns fans and Jets fans don't want to hear that, but facts is facts. Uh, you know, Bears fans don't want to hear that either, that Trubisky's in that conversation. But hopefully, yeah, I think it's got a lot to do with Matt Nagy's uh, play calling, to be honest with you. And so hopefully it gets to be better. You know, this is a game that no excuses, no room for error. Got to execute. Got to, you know, at this point in the season, we've hit December. Playoff spots on the line every week. Every, you know, everything's, every win, every game is important at this time of the year. And the Bears got to get it done. If you're still in contention, there's some teams that are already eliminated, but you know what they say. Uh, wide receiver Amari Cooper for the Cowboys on the road this season ha is averaging just 35 yards per game. So the Cowboys will look to get their star wide receiver one going uh, in Soldier Field against Kyle Fuller. It looks like Prince of Mukamara might not be able to play. He's doubtful with a hamstring. So that could affect the Bears secondary going into this one. Cowboys offense averaging 432 total yards per game this season. That's the most in franchise history. So I wasn't joking about this Cowboys offense. I know they've been struggling the last two games, but overall this season they've been on fire. Bears wide receiver one Allen Robinson has 10 plus targets in two straight games. Trubisky going to Allen Robinson a lot, and I expect more of the same uh, tomorrow night. They need to get Allen Robinson involved and feed him the ball and uh, hopefully Trubisky can do so protect the ball no turnovers no turnovers. speaking of that uh, don't turn the ball over no excuses to turn the ball over tomorrow night against this Cowboys defense Dallas has recorded zero takeaways in their last four games so combined so zero takeaways in the last four weeks four games um, four straight games no takeaways from the Cowboys. Bears got to protect the ball. No excuses. And execute. Cowboys have lost six of their, you know, they started the year 3-0, and but have lost six of their last nine games played. Like I said, Bears have won three of their last four. So you see where it's trending, but one game can change a lot. Uh, some field goal issues. I mean, the Bears, you know, Eddie Pinero has been an issue all year long, but the Cowboys have their own kicking issues as well as kicker Brett Maher leads the NFL in missed field goals with nine and has missed five of his last six kicks from the 40 to 49 yard range. So something to watch tomorrow night. Soldier Field is notorious for being a tough place to kick. It's going to be cold, maybe a little windy, and uh, we'll see if that affects the kicking game tomorrow night. Maybe he has the Cowboys and the Bears you know, going for it on fourth down uh, more likely than kicking long field goals so so much going into the game as storylines are everywhere it's going to be awesome we talked about Allen robinson's impact uh in the last two you know getting a lot of balls thrown his way the last two games another guy to look for is bears wide receiver anthony miller 
uh, looking to stay hot after he had nine catches for 140 yards last week against the De uh, Detroit Lions. So uh, Anthony Miller is going to be a target again, and uh, we'll see how he does. But the, you know the Bears receivers notorious for this season leading the NFL in drop passes. That can't happen, and they need to execute tomorrow night. Otherwise, we'll be going home. You know, we could easily be looking at going home early and watching the playoffs instead of playing on them. You know, Bears got themselves into this position. Both these teams got themselves into this position at 6-6. Six and six. No room for excuses. No room for, oh, we'll, we'll get them next week. Now is the time to absolutely execute. Every game is very important at this time of the year. Looking at injuries, the Bears will be without wide receiver Taylor Gabriel. Linebacker Danny Trevathan, looks like corner Prince of Mukamara, and tackle Bobby Massey. For the Cowboys, they look to be without Leighton Vander Esch, the linebacker. Uh, run, running back Tony Pollard is questionable. Safety Jeff Heath and defensive tackle Antoine Woods are both out. So, you know, a lot going into this game. The weather, it's going to be cold. Expected to be near freezing, low 30s tomorrow night. I thought the Cowboys were practicing outside, but... I mean, in Dallas, Texas, how uh, close to the elements are you going to really get? They're going to be, you know, playing in some cold weather against the Bears. And uh, people were talking about, I think it was, I want to say, uh, who was that? I want to say it was Randy Moss. But someone was saying uh, how, damn, I can't remember who it was that said it, but they were saying how, you know, this Cowboys team, no, it was Gronk. It was Rob Gronkowski on Fox was saying how this Cowboys team doesn't practice uh, in the cold. They like to practice in their nice, heated, warm facilities, and so they're not ready to go out into the cold weather. And that's what he was saying going into the Patriots game in uh, Foxborough. So hopefully the same thing, the same saying reigns true as the Bears come as the Cowboys come into Soldier Field to take on the Bears. Uh, you know, the Bears play outside in the elements. And they try to use that to their advantage, bringing a top 10 defense to the game. Hopefully, they can hit the Cowboys in the mouth early, and the Cowboys will be like, we want none of this cold weather. So we'll see how it goes. I can't wait. Going to be a hell of a game. Trubisky, Nagy, these Bears got to prove it to me again, show they can beat a good team. Some of you are saying, are the Cowboys a good team? Roster-wise, they definitely are. They're a loaded team on that roster. Now, will Jason Garrett and Kellen Moore execute we'll see bears are a, a talented roster as well will Nagy and trubisky execute get the job done will the bears receivers catch the ball will the bears defense do their job without you know possibly down uh starting corner so a lot to talk about going into this game i can't wait i hope you guys are excited too hope you guys enjoyed this episode i mean i'm gonna go ahead and make my pick right now i'm taking the bears at home I'm going to say Bears 20, Cowboys, uh, where am I going? I'm going to go Bears 20, Cowboys 13. I think we hold the Cowboys offense in check for the most part. I think this is, if you remember the game last year when the Bears went against the Rams in cold Soldier Field and the Rams wanted no part of that game and looked like they didn't want to be there and didn't want to play and didn't want to get hit. And the Bears' defense took over the game. Uh, I don't know if it'll be as easy, but I think there'll be a little bit of that cold weather shock that gets to the Cowboys, has them doing some uncharacteristic things. Maybe has them missing some tackles on defense. Maybe dropping some balls on offense. For the Bears, no excuses because they're used to this weather. they got to use it to their advantage. No drops. No mental errors. They need to cut down on the penalties and just fucking execute and find a way to beat these Cowboys. Just win, baby. My prediction, Bears 20, Cowboys 13. Can't wait for the game. Hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and leave a comment. Let me know what you think. And bear down. Go Bears. Have a good one, guys. Peace out.